Ciao, darlings. Happy full moon in Scorpio. This is literally going to be a cakewalk after eclipse season. So I'm really excited about this. Today, we're going to be talking about the full moon in Scorpio, how you might be feeling, some few like tips and tricks is to kind of like navigate this current energy, navigating the divide. There's a lot of separation that I'm experiencing or that I'm really like channeling through right now. This is my fourth time recording this. So I'm going to, I'm going to really, we're going to attempt. We're going to attempt. So today it is i got two little knobbins going on right now and i kind of wanted to live into the vibration of the title of this video and this is my favorite summertime dress it's my favorite summertime like after i live on an east coast island and so we go to the beach a lot around here in the summer and it's nice to be able to just kind of like take off your bathing suit and have something that's like chic and and covers up and you can kind of walk around town with nothing underneath. So I wanted to, since it's pouring rain outside, and I really hope you can hear some of the, the whoo and the a little bit of the um, wind out there. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty Scorpio date. <laughs> it's a pretty Scorpio day. <laughs> Y'all, it is Mercury retrograde, and like I said, I've tried to record this. This is my fourth attempt, so I'm not I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm just we'll do it live. We'll do it. We'll do it live. Sorry, I just I had to. I had to. Oh my god, so if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Sarah. I am a channel, a mystic. I do extremely quantum healing work and I work with very, very powerful leaders across time and space. And my quest is to find and help guide the new leadership team for the Awakened New Earth. So if you're here at my table, you are a leader in your life. You have no time to slow down. You can't really get lost in all of the woo-woo. I'm here to help you make sense of it. And sometimes, and actually a lot of the times, you know, I work with people that have gone too far into the woo-woo and they need to kind of come back to the 3D world and integrate some of these practices and integrate more of a growth mindset. And, you know, we've talked about this for a while now that we can't just sit under the Bodhi tree, Bodhi tree and meditate and channel it in, we have to actively participate in this world. We came to participate in this third dimensional matrix and utilize, co-create your world, co-create your world. So let's get into it. Let's get into everything that's going on, how you might be feeling. We're gonna use a skull. We're gonna use Mavin for the pause. So please pause this video, go grab your coffee or tea and we're gonna chit chat about, and your journal. So I'm gonna have some key dates so you can take some notes if you'd like. And uh, so pause the video with Mavin, a little Dalmatian. Pause the video. Okay, awesome, awesome. So I'll give you the dates right off the bat. So for Eastern Standard Time, where I am, this is happening on the 23rd of April at 1948. For Central Standard Time, this is on the 23rd of April, 1848. And for the Gold Coast in Australia, this is on the 24th of April at 9.48. So what does that mean, Sarah? So basically, and we talk in lenses around here, so we're gonna talk about all the different lenses. And later on in the video, we're gonna talk about the tarot and the minor arcana cards that represent the staking of the astrological wheel. So I like to show the tarot because everything in this entire universe is connected. Um, there is no accident whatsoever. Everything is literally completely perfect. And like I've said before, like the universe, actually not just the universe, but this earth was created because consciousness wanted to experience self. So consciousness and math had a baby and that's this planet. So everything is literally perfect. So there's a lot of fives that are coming through the minor arcana cards there are two fives that we're going to talk about so let's let's get into it let's get into it so sovereignty sovereignty what do you mean by you know this is we're integrating sovereign money we're integrating sovereign sensuality sarah what does that even mean so Sovereign was a word that when I was living in Australia, I was absolutely obsessed with and I'm going to find the picture of like I would write out the um definition of it from my little my little like a Collins notebook and then I had a few self-help books that I was reading that they would talk about sovereignty and so sovereignty to me is basically being completely in control of your thoughts words actions and intentions and not having to participate fully in the matrix reality like kind of escape not escaping but you know pulling yourself out of the taking the matrix cord and ripping it out of your own head basically and so I myself have to function within the matrix world. I do. I <laughs> I never went back to corporate after COVID. And so I love my restaurant job. I love when I pop up in people's lives. It's usually like a, I've been questioning my reality and I don't really know what's going on. I'm like, hey, you want Aquapana or Pellegrino? Or I pop up on your feed when you've been repeating those patterns over and over and over again. So I love that for all of us. 
So sovereignty, sovereignty. And why do you mean splits? Why do you mean timelines? What do you mean by any of that, Sarah? So the parable that I've given before, and I'm gonna give two references. One of them is mine, and one of them I really like and appreciate that Bashar has spoken of. So the one that I like to reference is going to the grocery store. And when I go through the grocery store line, you know, like I have like my, my paper money and I'm, and I'm ready to pay with my paper money. And so I was in the grocery store a few months ago and there's this woman in front of me that literally paid her bill with the palm of her hand. She just did it and, and that was the payment. And I'm just like, wow, that is so cool. There's no fear anymore. There's no judgment in any capacity that someone's on another ship. They're on another timeline. They're on another trajectory. The Bashar channel, which I really respect and appreciate, I think it's really accessible, is that you know when you're watching TV and then you change the channel. That other channel is still going. Just because you're watching this doesn't mean that there's not millions of other things that you could be watching. They're all still going, they're all still on, that's all still happening. So we cannot be judgmental and be like, I can't believe that someone's watching that channel instead of this channel. No, that's just, the trajectory that they're on. And so the reason that kind of the image that came to me when I was getting ready for this video and I was getting ready to record this was, you know, when you watch kind of like the beginning of certain, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take the little nobbins out. I don't really like, I just want it to be long. So you know when you're watching like the beginning of a like, fantasy movie, whether it be, you know, in the Matrix or whether it be like, um, like, like Twilight or whether it be, like any superhero movie ever. And the superheroes usually have like, they're like sauntering. They're sexy AF. They don't give an F about anything. They're not there for you. They're not dressing up to be like, come see me, come look at me. It's like, that's just their vibe. Like the vampires, that's just their vibe. The superheroes, that's just their vibe. So I feel like right now, post eclipse, kind of like, like <laughs> post nom, we're all in our sovereignty and we're all just like, yeah, yeah, I don't really need to because this, the last new moon eclipse, and I have an entire video on that, so definitely go check that out, was conjunct Chiron. So for a lot of us, this had, you know, mother wounds, this had father wounds, this had generational wounds, this had ancestral wounds, this had money wounds, this had core wounds, you know, for my Gen Xers, this was a big deal. They're having their Chiron return, this kind of like, I have a whole video on Gen X's waking up, so definitely go check that out. But this had so much to do with healing the I am statement and healing, like I know that I'm the first one in my family line to do things differently, but I'm doing it differently. Hella high water, I'm doing it, pardon me, differently. I'm back on the Earl Grey. Yeah, the chai, it, it, it's, I still have them, but I'm just feeling the Earl Grey still. And it was really funny, like when I was doing the Taurus season introductory video, which is called We've Leveled Up, so definitely go check that out. Uh, my guides, when I was like, okay, so like what? <laughs> and if you've seen it, I'm sorry, I have to repeat myself here. But I was like, okay guides, what messages do you have for the group? And they literally come in, they're like, you're drinking too much coffee. <laughs> So it was two days ago. So yesterday I went without coffee and I was like, I could nap all day. I had headaches. It was like, but sovereignty means this is, you know, I'm wrapping all around, wrapping it up like a bow. Sovereignty means being completely in control of your thoughts, words, actions, and intentions, and not having anything outside of yourself that you need or are dependent on, or in my case, addicted to. I have an extremely, my human Sarah has an extremely addictive personality. I do not drink. I do not ingest um, any alcohol. I do not ingest sugar. I don't smoke cannabis anymore. I take tinctures and butters and things like that. I have to stay clear to be able to channel, to be able to offer these messages and I channel direct from source so the last thing that I want to do is just be like hey source I'm all fudged up like give me your messages it's not gonna come through that way so it's not in any way a sacrifice this is my mission so I don't feel bad about it but it was a real big not wake-up call but it was a nice like reminder tap on the shoulder just to be like hey Sarah be aware be aware so Okay, I've already given the dates, and so we've talked a little bit about the timeline split. We've talked a little bit about, this is also something that I referenced in one of the attempts to record this video, but I'm gonna say it again because it's very important. If you're here with me, most likely you're feeling some of these ascension symptoms. 
exhaustion, waking up like you got hit by a metaphysical bus, a multidimensional bus, you have ringing in the ears, you have headaches, you have throat troubles, you have all different things that are going on. Lower back kind of near the kidney areas, you're having some pains, you feel like an old person, the next day you feel super vibrant. Sugar has been a food group, crying has been a food group, sleeping has been a food group, all these different things. And for a while, I honestly thought, my human Sarah avatar thought, that everyone on the planet was feeling this. Not everyone's feeling this. There's a whole collection of people, and you know, as I'm, you know, a few million, a few, maybe even up to a billion, I have no idea, their soul contracted a different trajectory than we did. So it's not that they're not feeling it, because I, I thought that they're feeling it, but then they're like avoiding it, staying in a bubble. That's so not true. They're physically not feeling what we are feeling. They're physically, actively, consciously choosing, signed the contract before they came to human earth to not feel this during this time. So I really had to go back and look at some of my judgments, really, and ask for forgiveness for that. Because I, this is my last human life, y'all know this. So I'm leaving clean, I'm like really looking at myself. There's nothing that I've done in this human life that I cannot come back for and, and atone for. So I'm very, very grateful for that and the decisions that even in my most unconscious spaces can definitely come back from. Same with you, same with you. There's very few things that you have to like definitely repeat the karmic cycle and you know what they are. So let's talk a little bit about the astrology and this is your chair right over here. I'm really grateful if this is your first time here for YouTube really helping us understand the quantum universe and kind of quantum mechanics where it's just me and you having coffee or tea or water. I always have water as well and we're just talking about astrology and we're talking about the planets and the growth mindset but when are you? Right? Right? How cool is that? How cool is that? We're transcending time and space right now, my guy. I know. Cheers to that. Thank you, YouTube, for that. So, and thank you, Patreon, for that. Thank you so much. So, let's talk about the astrology and where the planets are and how we might be feeling. This is a general astrological wheel. Starts in Aries, goes all the way around over to Pisces. So, we have the sun right over here in Taurus at four degrees, and then we have the moon over here in Scorpio at four degrees. So, that's when we have a full moon. So, we're going to talk about those lenses where the moon and the sun are a complete perfect opposition. But the moon scooty doops. The moon is going to come around, and we're going to have a new moon in Taurus in a few weeks. But, like this little guy over here, Pluto, he kind of like takes his time. I don't know if I've said this already, but I really need to highlight this because it's important that Pluto is now at two degrees of Aquarius. So for my Scorpio sun, moon, and risings, as well as for my Aquarius sun, moon, and risings, you are going to be feeling this. You're going to be feeling either a lightness or a heaviness, or you're processing very deeply, whether it be in your sleep, you're integrating, your imagery is coming online. Something is going on. Why those two signs, Sarah? One, because Pluto is in Aquarius. That's the Aquarius. But Two, Scorpio is run by Mars and Pluto. Pluto is one of the ruling planets for Scorpio. So the two of y'all are going to be feeling it very, very intensely, but I find it to be a very gentle integration. Like I've been saying to Aquarius for a little while, y'all are so efficient in your processes that you're just like, no, 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 I get it. Let's move on. How do we change the world? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So a lot of this is going to be just like instantaneous downloads coming in, instantaneous Kundalini awakenings, whatever you've labeled it. Doesn't really matter. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. And... So, and like I've said before, this is a cafeteria line. So even what I say in a video, some of it might not resonate for you. If none of it resonates, then please, you just scroll past my face. That's so okie dokie if you're watching this on YouTube. And for anyone that is interested, my new moon and full moon Patreon group, we do workshops. This is available like a week plus in advance in that group. We do, you know, complete like all signs readings. I channel the guides. I do a full tarot reading in there. It's very, very accessible. It's a $10 a month investment. And I offer a seven day free trial. So if you're seeing this on the day of the full moon, the link is listed below. Definitely go check that out and give it give it a week trial. It's completely free. What's the if if the worst case scenario is that nothing in your life changes, like do it, do it, do it. So what do we know about Taurus? Let's talk about Taurus first in this lens. Money, please, values, access to resources, bougie things. And I talk about it a lot in my complimentary Taurus season introduction labeled We've Leveled Up. 
So during this time, you know, it's such a high of Aries season and it's still Aries season as I record this. So I'm a little bit and we still have Mercury retrograde in Aries. I'm a little so I apologize in advance of that. A lot of the times like a part of me was going to say Aquarius Taurus is like we're run by Venus. We want to we want to we want a bougie life. We want a cozy life. We want a comfy life. And so the reason that has so much to do with money and sensuality and sexuality is attached it's because of this axis here, right over here, in a certain sense. But we all know everything is energy. The way that you feel about yourself is projected through your eyes into the environment that's around you. And money is a mindset, just like growth is a mindset. Everything's energy. We're literally the consciousness running human avatars on the crested rim, of, crested rim of a fireball ball shooting through infinite. That's literally it. I'm going to repeat that. We are literally consciousness, running human avatars, standing on the crested rim of a fireball shooting through the infinite. Yeah, take some pressure off. Take some pressure off. Yeah, please, please. Take a long weekend. Yeah, we're all going to die one day. It's okay. So the sun is in Taurus and we have Jupiter and Uranus conjunct jumped right over here. It was just conjunct jumped fully a few days ago. So I have two videos complimentary on my YouTube channel. The second one, the part two, I go through all of the signs. That is the style of the all signs reading that I have in my Patreon group. So if you like that style and you're interested in more content like that, definitely go check out the Patreon group. It is for you. It is I love this group so much. It is so, so super de duper cool. I put a lot of my heart and soul into it. So it's definitely worth your time and energy if you appreciate my content. And I have a donation based one as well that's a, the Support the Cafe. It's a $3 a month. If you like my content for free and you'd like to give back to the cafe and kind of keep this ship sailing, that's the, that's the investment for you. And I appreciate everyone in there. We do a dragon card at the top of the month. Yeah, it's a good group. It's a good group. So right now we have Mercury retrograde over here in the sign of Aries. And Mercury is going to go direct. Let me check two days after this full moon. And so that's gonna be on the 25th of April and it's at, for this full moon, Mercury is at 16 degrees of Aries. It's gonna go one more degree to 15 degrees of Aries and it's gonna turn its little scoot around and it's gonna continue down that way. We're learning healthy boundaries in a way that for a lot of the people pleasers that have been people pleasers for a very long time, you're really, finding a sharpness to your communication style when someone has purposefully tipped over, towed over the line. And we can be as gentle and loving as possible. That's, you know, kindness is very, very important. Not being nice, but being kind. And so if someone mistakes that kindness for weakness, what do we know about the Scorpio? When you need to strike, you will. You absolutely will. And so a lot of this integration that's been going on is about, you know, like that sensuality that I just mentioned, that financial freedom that we've been talking about for years now. It's stepping out of the matrix and being your delightful, delicious self, but knowing that it's not for anyone else but you. Yeah, we're not out here dancing around being like, come look at me, come look at me. We are walking down the road of our life looking delicious, looking delicious. And it's not for anybody else but you. It's kind of like the healthiest gym culture is what's coming to my mind right now, is that if you have been in toxic gym culture, you understand that, but if you've been in healthy gym culture where people can really say, hey, you know, that booty, you've been working on that booty. You've been eating the proper protein. You've been really like looking at your, like your time and your tempo. You've been showing up and I honor you for that. I honor your coach. I honor your trainer and I honor the dedication that you've been put in. But it's not sexual in any capacity. It's healthy. You know that. If you have a healthy gym community, please comment below because I literally just said thank you to one of the gentlemen that works at the gym that I go to today, he's such a sweet person. Like literally, he's like dancing around, like mopping the floors, feeling like this is the best life ever. Like healthy gym culture, there's nothing like it in the world. So definitely, and if you're Gloucester local and you're interested and you need an accountability buddy, we can go like, please join me for a gym session. I'll show you around, I'll introduce you to some people. I literally am just hopping around, like no shoes on, just doing my thing, dancing all over the place. It is the healthiest environment as ever. Like I'm grabbing my like 2.5s and my fives around like these power lifters and they're like, you're doing great, 
kid. I'm like, thanks, so are you. I love you. Like it's so this is healthy, sovereign sensuality. There's a Cat Williams quote that's really popping into my head right now, which is like, I, I don't remember which interview it was on, where he's like, I don't even look at things that I don't want. I, I don't look at the wives of other people. I don't look at anything because I'm so powerful as a manifester. Like, that is mine. If I look at it, it is mine. So just be aware and set those boundaries. Use that scorpionic tail during this time period to express yourself. If you need to set a healthy boundary, you do it. You do it. It's so okay. And what do we know about boundaries? It's not to say I'm keeping you out. It's to say this is what I can offer you. Yeah, it used to be here and my ears were bleeding, but now I'm offering you this. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. But. So Mercury's <sighs> retrograde. So that's actually like, it's not gonna conjunct by degree to the North Node over here, but this has so much to do. It's kind of in between. We have Chiron, we have the North Node, we have Venus over here in Aries. So what have I been talking about for a little while? For my Scorpio rising, Scorpio Sun and Moon. If you're in a healthy partnership with Venus and Aries, you show your partner a good time. You devour them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is healthy. Try something new on. Try something new on. This video is like definitely 18 plus, I just have to say, just have to say. Yeah, Venus and Aries, it's like, do it, do it right. So Mercury retrograde almost conjunct the North Node. This is really saying the North Node, another lens, the head of the dragon, our collective destiny in the sign of Aries, the I am statement, the infant baby ram. So it does, and then we have Chiron in the mix as well. We talked about that at length within that new moon eclipse in Aries conjunct Chiron. It's the wounded healer, the wounded warrior. So it's still gonna feel awkward. It's gonna feel awkward to set boundaries. You might be the first person in your family line to do this. You're the first person in your family line to start your own business, to do any of the things that you're doing, to leave the unhealthy, toxic relationship. So that's why it feels so heavy. That's why it feels so tough. That's why there's so much like crying. That's why there's so much that's happening. That's like, why am I so emotional about this? Why am I feeling this so deeply? It's because you're doing it for your ancestors. Yeah. You're doing it for the people that came before you that didn't. So it's a big deal. You're doing it for a lot of people. So please take some pressure off. Please drink some water with me. Please be kind to yourself in every way. And we're going to trip and fall a bunch. I'll give a personal tale. So... I had a gentleman suitor, you know, long and short of it, I had to set a boundary with a gentleman suitor that, you know, I had said immediately to his request for a date, I'm not interested, I'm not getting the love connection, no thank you. And then he really was like messaging me on days that were extremely spiritual and I tried my best to just be gracious and kind in my way. And then after like, a, you know, a left on red kind of, and then another one, I was like, okay, I have to set a very, very firm boundary. And so I drafted up the, the list. And you know, it was funny because I was watching a, uh, a Danica Patrick podcast, um, her, you know, pretty intense podcast. And it was talking about like a relationship person was on there. And so I got some phrases I got some things that I could really put into it. I process deeply. I'm a Scorpio rising conjunct Pluto. So it's just like I deep dive into these things. I waited a good 12 plus hours to send the message. And then I called in a friend. I called my friend that I respect and that I really like I'm in the foxhole with her. And I was like, hey, can I read this to you? I want to make sure that I'm coming across the right way, especially with Mercury retrograde over here. I wanted to make sure that like I needed to see my shadow. I needed to make sure that I wasn't overreacting, that I was really in my way and so I did it I sent it I blocked I did all the things I felt great about it and then afterwards I was like man that was a lot but usually like a month or two ago even a, like a year ago that would have buckled you that would have buckled you Sarah so it was really empowering for me to really say like I know I just look all like cute and all over the place and a little ostentatious but if you toe the line no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. If you step over that line, if I say no, and then you keep coming and keep coming and keep coming, we can't always be that way. And a lot of it for myself personally was kind of unpacking like, 
not the people pleaser in me, but you know, I'm a very public person. And so I don't always want to be the one to be like, what the F? But in this situation, like, we gotta do it. It's okay if you're the villain in other people's story. It's okay if you're not the one. It's I have an entire video on reverence for the villain. I have an entire video on what is a light worker and why do they trigger me so much. So it's okay. It's okay to do that. So I wanted to say that like I, like I am here with you. I am not preaching and saying you do all this down here. I'm living into this vibration as well. So I just wanted to give that full aside for you. And you like kings and queens don't act like that. Absolutely not. They don't act like that. So talked about it, talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. And like I said, Mercury is going to go direct. So if you feel as though you've been kind of stagnant on some big decisions, I'm not making massive decisions. Definitely don't sign anything until after the 25th. Is that what I just said? The 25th? Yes. So just call in a friend. If you're making big decisions, if you're signing something, have your lawyer triple check it, triple check it. Everything's a little bit cuckoo pants right now. So talked about this talked about Aries. Um, we've mentioned, you know, Saturn and Pisces. We've talked about Neptune and Pisces, and we've talked about Mars and Pisces. We've talked about Pluto and Aquarius right over here. And I just want to highlight, I just want to highlight that, you know, this area, this is the ascendant sign. This is the mask we wear to the world. This is the way, like, doing things on our own. Down here, this is cultural family roots, the roots of the tree of our life. Up here, this is our public life, legacy. This is what we do every day, but this is how the world sees us. And this is the side for relationships. So as you can see, there's an ever so slight focus astrologically on self, soul purpose, money, integrating, and values as well as just how you feel about yourself. Yeah, it takes an extremely confident and comfortable and sovereign person to be able to step out and feel all delicious and say, I'm going to like be sexy for myself. Yeah, yeah, you are. Because the people that are judging you, they're just jealous. That It's not that they're judging you. It's they're looking at you in awe, really. This is the house of self over here. So we have a lot of activity and that little wince happening. It's just like we're leaders. We have to inspire people to do it on their own. So you have to mirror people around us. Yeah, it's not jealousy. It's not anything. It's you must be the woman in the red dress, the glitch in the matrix. The like, you got to do it because that's who you are. We're in the mid to post-apocalyptic world right now. Post-COVID, it's kind of like, we have to remember that after the Spanish flu came the roaring 20s where people just like dressed up and wore hats to the bank because they could. There's no like standard operating procedure about how to be human. Dress up your avatar. I have to also highlight within that statement that I have a video of, you know, body decorating to body modification and where is the line. As well as my entire uh, human story of waking up post-woke, I'm just going to leave that right there. Not getting into it. Not getting into it. Not getting into it. Not getting into it. So now let's talk about Scorpio, deep transformation, death and rebirth, and the full moon, we release things. So when the sun and the moon, the moon is so bright in the sky, it highlights something that we might not have been privy to. So I'm listening to my guides. For some people that are aware, and this is someone on the public YouTube channel, that are aware that they're in partnerships that are not meant for them. And whether you're staying out of fear or about, you know, narcissism or you're staying in a way that really isn't serving you. The universe knows. I mean, like, I know. Like, the universe is talking to me and offering you this message. And the person that you're with knows. The person that you're with knows as well. So you're equally a, an 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10 for them. I really hope you could hear that because it's so beautiful. And so know that you can't lie to spirit. You can't lie to God. You can't lie to the universe of your understanding and think like, oh, no, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and then later on and then I'm going to leave them and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to flirt on the internet webs and I'm going to do that like my guy. No, it's, it's 
the parable of like wearing a plastic mask over your face in the Taurus season introductory video. I think I put it in there. Like just go watch that because it's like everyone knows that you're lying. And so I just wanted to offer that validation for you if you're thinking that you're like, like literally across time and space, like source is giving me that message that it's okay to end that relationship and to talk about it because the person that you say hey i'm not happy in this relationship they're gonna be like oh thank god i've been cheating on you for a while now like thank god you're finally saying this so just know that you're 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 good you're good it's okay like you can you can you can come out of hibernation and and talk about that. So that was for someone very, very specific. And sometimes I don't always like giving the messages. Like even sometimes in my private sessions, I'm like, sauce, that shoots between the eyes. And they're like, tell them, you want to be efficient in your processes, girl. So just saying, just saying. And so also, okay, I'm sorry, my, my guys, it's coming in hot. We have to remember that we are the amalgamation of the five closest people to us. So show me your friends and I'll show you your future type thing. So if your abundances, if you've been kind of like functioning at baseline, if you've been like shopping in like the budget section, and you're like, why I've been working so hard, I've been trying all these different things and it's just not coming in. It's because the people in your life, that energy is preventing it from happening. When you're abundant, it your cup runneth over, truly. Like if I work, the people that I work with at the restaurant, I offer my services on a donation base because there's a reason that we're an energetic match for each other and I'm able to offer that to them. This isn't just for me. I can't just sit in my golden tower and be like, source is talking directly to me. No, 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 no. This is meant to be shared. This experience, this entire life, this human experience is meant to be shared. So we can't think to ourselves that... If it's not slapping, look at those five people and see if you have to energetically take one of them from VIP and put them in acquaintance and then keep that boundary. And that's okay to do. Be a leader, be you know in control of your life, be sovereign. It's so okay to do that. It's terrifying, like I had said a little bit ago. It is so intense right now. And so if it terrifies you, that's your work. If it triggers you, that's where the gold is. Truly, we have to be so grateful for the trigger right now and so grateful for the person that is triggering us. Sometimes they could be the most unconscious and that's even in and of itself, a not a judgment, but like it's an inappropriate phrasing to use because source has spoken through people that my human avatar has deemed to be unconscious, but it's triggering something inside of myself to say that's where you can focus to heal. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. So this house over here, the eighth house, is the lions and tigers and bears portion of the chart. It's very, very deep transformation. It's where we've chosen the relationships. And, you know, because usually things go this way. The south node and the north node go backwards. But usually our planets go this way, save the retrogrades. So kind of like once we've gone from my home, mother, we've gone through like children, creativity, play, our everyday life and practical service. We go over to the descendant, that's the relationships as well as open enemies, the people that we've chosen and now they're in it. We sign contracts with people, shared possessions. I think this is also the house of like gambling and stuff like that. So check your addictions right now. Definitely check your addictions right now. There's a lot of people, and this is coming through right now, and I'm having a full body chill to it. There's a lot of people that are really processing a lot of the medical stuff that's been going on. And it's very Harry Potter-esque. I can't even say it because I don't, I want my videos to reach as many people as possible. So if you're frustrated and angry over some of that manipulation and some of that, like the, you know, think of the scorpion tail type stuff, you are not alone. It's a big deal. It's a big deal and it's difficult to process on your own. So uh, my email address is always listed below. Um, we can set up just a processing session. There's no astrology, there's no woo-woo, there's no tarot or anything. We're just chit-chatting and we can talk about it and just, just know that you're not alone. Just know that you're not alone in that, that there's a huge grouping of people within the millions that they're saying, my guides are saying, that are really waking up to the fact that a lot of things have been manipulated for financial gain. So I'm just going to leave that there and 
just let you know that it's a big gulp. A lot of it is because of the deep father processing that a lot of people did for the um, the new moon eclipse, whether it be conscious or unconscious, a lot of deep mother father issues came up. And in the toolbox in the public YouTube, on my public YouTube channel, I have the, and then there was mother and Papa can you hear me, my mother and father, like capital M, capital F videos that are really intense to watch and to listen to. So definitely time out with yourself and check in and make sure that you're in a super like open but also grounded space to watch those videos. They're very, very triggering to listen to and to watch. So if you're feeling like you've processed a lot but you still need a little bit of validation, those are two videos for you. Um, but just also, even if you just need someone to share with, send me an email my friends, just send me an email and we can just chit chat. If there comes a certain point that I'm processing with you, then we'll set up a session, but just know that we can have an email chat back and forth and you're not alone. There's a lot of people that just need someone to listen to them and talk therapy out with yourself in the mirror as well. That can be huge. Mirror therapy is a big deal. And I have a lot of subscribers. Please comment below if you do mirror work and just share with the group that that can be such a really healthy way to have a meditation. I just want to highlight Lilith over here. I talk a lot about Lilith in the Uranus Jupiter conjunction part one because Lilith's a key player in that conjunction. And I think I mentioned it a little bit in part two as well in the individuals. Sometimes when I'm channeling, I completely forget what I say, especially when I do chart readings. It's just like I just let spirit speak through me. So I just want to highlight that this is in our house of everyday life and practical service. And I have a whole video on Lilith. It's from last summer. I'm completely covered in red paint, so you can't miss that one. So definitely go check that out farther down the line on the YouTube channel. I have a whole video on relationships are drastically changing. That's in the public YouTube toolbox. And I really re-upped the toolbox, my friends. I really re-upped the toolbox, so definitely go check that out. Let's talk about the tarot really quick, and then I'm going to ask my guides if they have some specific messages, and they do. Oh my god, I love it when they're excited. So these are heavy hitting cards and I just I reference this in Taurus the Taurus season introductory video this is the Venus card she's Taurus through and through I also want to highlight this card the more I did some more research is a Taurus run card it was originally called the Pope it's a Trinity card power of three very similar to the um what are the other two cards? Like the lovers has this same kind of like up, down, down. Uh, the six of pentacles also. The, you know, a Libra run card where, is it the six of pentacles? Yes, the Libra balance scales, but it is the six of pentacles, I believe. Where he's holding the scales and he's like giving to other people. So it's this trinity where is there down below and he's up top he's up top it's actually the same hand symbol that the um, in the ten of swords that he's like dead on the ground that his hand is making that same symbol so this has a lot to do with kind of like chop wood carry water this is we're integrating a very new level of understanding whether it be orthodox or unorthodox whether it be you know like a lot of people are finding Jesus again a lot of people are finding the book again and it's really lovely to see however you pray and however you meditate and those are two very different things do it however you can find the God of your understanding and submit to that God in whatever way possible the universe the God of your understanding and I have a parable for you that I or just a, a personal story that I want to give when it comes to the book and when it comes to certain things so I was curious the first time in the book and the New Testament that you meet Sarah because my name is Sarah it's a really powerful name so I wanted to see like what was the first story that Sarah comes in and it's the story of circumcision where you know it was Sarai and Abram and then God came down and I'll butcher this so definitely go check it out in your own capacity um, their original names was God I uh, was Abram and Sarai and God came down said you're gonna give birth to a you know the king of some kind and we'll birth we'll birth kings and we'll birth the um 
Yeshua and said, you know, I'm going to change your names to Abraham and Sarah and Abraham, you have to, you know, circumcise yourself. And it was like, he was much, much older, an older gentleman. And Sarah kind of like laughed at the angels. And I think it's like, list, like in the Quran where the angels are literally in her tent and they're like, you're going to give birth to this baby. And she's like, I'm in my eighties or something like that. And she's like, wouldn't that be nice? She was sarcastic AF to the angels in her tent. And I just love that for her. There are many a times, if you've been with me for a while, where I'm just like channeling information. I've got like seven aliens in the room or something like that. And I'm just like giggling to myself. I'm like, what's going on over here? So it's kind of cool. So, but I found that after I read that story where this is so much to do with sensuality, sexuality and stuff like that, that in my personal practice and opinion, I did not take that as doctrine. I do not think that everyone needs to circumcise themselves. I do not think that that is the way. But finding a God of your understanding, a universe of your understanding, where you recognize that you are a penny, a pebble, a fraction, a drop of the ocean, and also the ocean in and of itself, and having a God that you fear in your own way, to say there is a power greater than me that is in control of all this, but, and we co-create together. I really hope that this is making sense. Where just like I was saying, like you can't lie to spirit, you can't lie to God, you can't lie to the universe. You can't say that you're smarter than anything that's happening, like at all. You're not smarter than the entirety of consciousness. We're here to experience this world. We are source having a human experience. So I really hope that that makes sense. I really, really, really hope that that is making sense. And so listen to the vibration of what I'm saying. Like I said, I'm not saying you have to like read the book or do all these things. Like this is a cafeteria line. If it works for you, if it does, if it doesn't, just don't stare at it and don't get triggered by it. But if you're triggered by it, look at the trigger and say, okay, where did this come from? Maybe my parents were super duper religious and I'm so against that completely. Find balance within that and look at the root of it, which is the parental issue. It's not the word, it's the parental issue. But I really love the fact that after I read the first story of Sarah and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I don't agree with that at all, but I love how it represents what's underneath it is finding the God of your understanding and understanding that, that you are the child of that God and they're in control. Yeah, when you're in line with source, anything is possible. So I just wanna, my guides are saying it, it hit. So these are fun cards. So this is, this represents the first Dakin of Taurus. So this is zero to, or one, yeah, zero, one to 10 degrees of Taurus. And the sun is at four degrees of Taurus as we have this. So again, there's a lot to unpack here, that this is an establishment, whether it be a religious establishment, whether it be a church, whatever it may be. And you know, some people say it's like sorrow, it's ill health, it's all that. But do you see how there's no door? Yeah, they're not welcome there. And do you see how they're persevering within community? Yeah, they're just keeping on keeping on. They're doing great. With community and understanding, we can fly. We can fly. So this is where the sun in the sky is. And this is where the moon is. This represents the zero, one to 10 degree of Scorpio. And this is what they call a gate card. So do you see that this, you know, could be a male or female and extremely like androgynous for lack of a better term. This represents you. There are five cups and three of them are knocked over, but it takes two to cheers. This is the two of cups, like basically representing the two of cups. So because, you know, like I said, and like I've, pardon me, pardon me, I just want to make sure that we're good on the microphone. Like I've said, and the intention of my entire practice is I work with very empowered leaders. We have to pick up the pieces, process deeply and efficiently, and pick up the two cups and walk over the gate. 
So this is sorrow, this is somberness. You know, there's so much, you know, and again, I can sound disassociated in ways, but like I have a whole video and you kind of need to be a little disassociated to function on the planet right now. There's a lot of death going on right now. A lot of people are leaving the planet. And in the toolbox, I have two videos, the public toolbox, I have two videos on death is different nowadays, how to prepare for the moment the human's gonna die. I've been talking about that for a long time now. I'm a minister. I chose to become a minister to help people, death doula, to process after death and kind of connect to their loved ones, if that's your language. But standing there and looking at what doesn't serve us, what has been left behind, whatever establishment is not letting us in, what people, what relationships don't serve us, we can get lost in that trauma, truly. But around here, we don't take our traumas and label it on our lapel and say, hey, I'm this way because this happens to me. You had a whole video that I did a while ago on the end of quote unquote therapy. And you know, it takes a village. So a lot of people really, a lot of my clients, you know, have therapists that they talk to. They have, you know, myself as like the channel and the astrologer. They have a coach that they go to the gym with. Like you, it takes a village, it takes a village. But if you are constantly, and this has a lot to do with your nervous system. This has a lot to do, I'm not the only one that has this language. Like the holistic psychologist speaks of this a lot of the time. And you can't go back and chit chat all the time about the thing that happened in the past. That's not how we heal it. We accept it and we acknowledge it and we have a safe person to really process it with. And then we pick up those two cups that are standing, that are full, and we keep on keeping on. And we find our people and we vibe. You're not alone in this. It, you need someone to help you look at things that you're too scared to look at. It's like you just inherited this massive mansion that some great, great, great grandparent left you across time and space. And there's this like nasty little closet that there's a bookshelf in front of that you're just like, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to look in there. It's kind of the same thing in our inner self with our traumas. There's like a little compartment within the palace of yourself. They're like, I don't want to look at my father's stuff. I don't want to look at my mother's stuff. I don't want to deal with that. Get an accountability buddy to really process that with. Trauma healing is so deep. But around here, we do it efficiently. We really do. And when you're ready to do that work, when you're ready to process that deeply, I am ready to work with you. This is a lot happening all at the same time. If you're watching this on YouTube and it's your first time on my channel, my guy, I pack like six months of work into each of these. So I'm very self-aware in the fact that I've thrown a lot at you. But like I say in the description, my voice is meant to unlock codes within yourself. So if any of what I'm saying is like anxiety producing or in any capacity like too much, then close that journal, pick up your coffee or tea, and just sip on it and listen. And just listen and let it integrate on its own. Depending on your generation, the youngsters nowadays, this is like effortless for them effortless. I'd say millennials were like half and half sees where, and I'm not the first time I've ever spoken of this, but it's like, we're, we halfway book learn and process that way. And then halfway it integrates when we sleep. It halfway integrates in, you know, very quantum ways. The older generations wanted to be very hands-on. That's how they understand things. So that's why Gen X waking up right now is such a big deal for them to contract like, no, no, this eclipse portal, just like take the rue out. Take the room Okay, I want to ask my guides if they have any specific messages for us. After this video, I'm going to sit with my three gray aliens that I've mentioned before because they just keep coming in hot and I feel like they have some good. I'm just going to do a complete channeled message with them because that's, I, I just, I've never asked them like why they're here and there's like a somberness to them. And I just want to, because sometimes our guides are not our aliens and our like watchers and protectors and our archangels. So there's like so many different teams that are with you right now. 
And every person on the planet has like a minimum of 10,000 souls in other areas of the world that are there just for you. So I just have to say that like my three great aliens, you have your own team of beings, of light workers, of interdimensionals, of multidimensional beings, of angels, of galactic beings, of, you know, just, just vibrations that are there to help you, that are there to help you. So I just wanted to highlight that. So the changes that a lot of us have been integrating right now are so much bigger than we could have ever possibly imagined them to be. So the, my guides and my higher self are just saying, like, be as kind to yourself as possible. Food is different. Working out is different. Everything is different. So if you tell your body to do something, very much the Arnold Schwarzenegger type of a mentality that on his off days, he would be in his mind doing curls and his muscles would you know, expand exponentially. So just know that that's available to you and try it on. Try it on. During this Taurus season with the Scorpio full moon as well as with the new moon coming in the sign of Taurus, be an experiential learner and try it on. Like, don't take my word for it. Don't take my higher self's word for it. And don't even take Source's word for it. With a clear heart and intention, you can do anything. So if you have a clear heart and intention and not so much like, oh, I'm going to test you on this. How can I make as much money as possible? It's not like that. But try something small and declare it and see what happens. Sovereign sexuality and sensuality is mixed in the same capacity and is the same word as sovereign modesty. You could have a completely covered person, a completely covered hijab, a completely covered female that as she saunters down the street is dripping in divinity. So maybe take the word sexuality, sensuality, modesty away. Sovereign divinity. Sovereign divinity. You will look to many like a superhero, like a model, like a celebrity, that they just look at you and don't understand why they're drawn to you. That is and will be common. So try on different things for size. Try on whatever it is that you have been deeply drawn to for some time and share with your community, your platform, whatever that may be. And offering what you know for free, whether it be in a volunteer space in the physical, whether it be on a YouTube space in the multidimensional and the quantum, but every single one of you has something to offer this world, to share, to find your people and community. Where does this fall in your chart? Where is Taurus and Scorpio in your chart? If you do not know, look at the grid behind and use money, sensuality, shared possessions as your film. And then take your sun sign, wherever the sun is in the sky when you were born, and place it on the wheel to ask yourself what matters most to you. First steps in understanding what is happening. So there are two videos that I'm gonna do. The grays, I'm gonna channel as soon as I hang up here. Hang up, I know. And then the video that it's, it's astrology is a very, very like accessible way to step 101 into the woo woo and 101 into the because it's overwhelming where you're like, I have all this work that I have to do and I have all of these things that I have to process and I have all these areas of my life that I really need to like work on. Utilize the moon manifest in who I am, release shared possessions, manifest money and values and access to resources, and then releasing old versions of quest and adventure. It's a flow. It's a flow. And I talk about it. I have a resource, the birth chart basics. That's a two part video, um, digital download. Um, it's the link is in the about section or the link is in the description. So definitely go check that out. And when you become a patron, that is completely free for you. There's a toolbox in the Patreon group. Definitely. If you're watching this in the Patreon group, go check the toolbox out and make sure that you've downloaded all of those things and all of those resources that are complimentary for you. 
But yeah, astrology is a very accessible first step and it shows you like, okay, focus here, release there. Focus here, release there. We all have this grid. But yeah, where's four degrees, it's four degrees, four degrees of Scorpio falling in your chart? That's where you need to release. That's what you have to let go of. Yeah. You're going to get a new moon and a full moon every single month and you're going to have opportunities. This is, you know, the rest of your life. This isn't just like we do this work now and then we just go back to humaning. This is, you're integrating these metaphysical practices amalgamizing with your growth mindset and your leadership growth and development tools. This is a safe space for you to express yourself. And then you fly off and you're good. I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm going to talk to the Greys and see what they have going on and what they'd like to say. And please comment below what you're going through, what's what's happening. And like I said, send me an email if you don't feel safe to share this on YouTube. Um, definitely go check out the Patreon group. Like I said, it's a seven-day free trial if you're interested in that. And I put so much of myself into that. My email address if you're keen to set up a one-on-one -on -one session. I do you know private birth chart readings. We do full channeling sessions. We do processing sessions, um, tarot readings as well. Um, it's interesting. I, I feel like a lot of people are not stepping away from the tarot, but they're keen to utilize it in their own sense. So I love that this is a teaching video and I'm offering you ways that you can empower yourself. I'm offering you these tools so that you can go out there as the most authentic version of you. I'm a guide, no guru. Love you. A beautiful full moon, my dear.